Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little pistol that you guys see in my hands and that you saw throughout the intro. As of this video, this is sort of the announcement day for the Mark 57 from CMMG. And big thank you to them for sending the pistol out so that way we could do the review and bring this to you. But I am a closet, really not so much closet, 5.7 junkie. I have a bunch of videos on my channel with ammo tests, armor tests, all of that stuff. Um, so when I heard they were making the Banshee series of pistols and SBRs, in 5.7, I needed to get one. So uh, we got one in. We've been shooting a ton for about two months now prior to the release of this video. Got about 500 rounds through it so far. So we're gonna tell you basically all about it, how it shot, what I think of it overall, the features of the pistol. It also comes in SVR form, I should mention that. And uh, all that stuff, what we're gonna do first is see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this little pistol setup here because the 5.7 is known for being one of the more accurate pistol rounds out there on the planet. So let's get into that, let the dogs take a look at it, and then uh, come back inside and get into the details. Time to test the accuracy of this little pistol here in 5.7. So we have a target down range at 50 yards. I debated between 100 and 50 because there's no doubt about it, 5.7 can do 100 and can probably do it pretty well. But in the pistol configuration, I figured probably most guys would be keeping it in a little bit tighter uh, distance wise. So I've got a few different loads out here just for time's sake. However, I'm going to roll in photos, guys, of uh, Definitely some companies that sent out ammo to facilitate the review, which I appreciate. Uh, we had to do all of that under NDA because at the time of me filming this, this gun uh, doesn't exist yet. It's vaporware, right? It's not announced. So uh, the first load we're gonna put through it is some Vanguard Outfitters. This is their 34 grain Black Dragon Fang load. This stuff looks nasty. Uh, I've never shot it through this gun, so we'll see how it does. Put five rounds of that through it and uh, see how she likes it. The rest we're using is the CTK Precision Rest. Scope is the Steiner PX, or rather P4XI 1 to 4. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Let's do it. Not mad about that group, uh, for sure. Next load up is gonna be the Federal American Eagle 40 grain FMJ load. This is kind of like the bulk stuff that people uh, buy when they're trying to get 5.7 cheap. It's been relatively inexpensive um, over the last year or so. And uh, we'll see how this little pistol here likes it, at least at this distance, distance rather. Accuracy so far, pretty darn good. Make me think I should have put it at 100. Anyway, uh, next up we have the Elite Ammunition. This is their Protector 1 load. Um, this one, I believe, has the VMAX bullet in there. So we'll load up five rounds of that and see how she shoots. So, yep, yeah, uh, trigger on this pistol, as we have it configured right now, is just the mil spec trigger. So nothing fancy there. And uh, with this scope combination and me being probably dehydrated due to the triple digit temperatures out here, I'll take those groups so far. So we'll see how this one does. Let's check them out. Well, we started out with that fang stuff and uh, it certainly shot it pretty darn well. Center to center there. We're right at about seven eighths, three quarters of an inch, somewhere in that range. 
Again, guys, we're at 50 yards for this test. And then we went over here with the American Eagle, shot that very well. Um, we are center to center, right at about a half an inch there. So MOA group with that one. Can't be mad about that. Again, mil spec trigger, four power scope. Uh, then lastly there, we had the Elite. Had that one kind of fly out, otherwise good. But uh, with, the, with the one over there on the edge, we're right at about inch and three quarters, inch and seven eighths. So we count them all here, that's what we do. But all in all, seems to be a pretty accurate little pistol. We'll start out here at the end of the pistol and work our way back for some semblance of order. On there right now, I have a uh, AR-15 M16A1 style flash hider, so it's got the holes all the way around. We've used that throughout the review. I've also shot it with the thread protector that it comes with. It does have half by 28 inch threads on there, so for American shooters, that's one of the more common uh, thread pitches out there. Anything that'll fit your AR-15 in terms of muzzle devices will work on this pistol as well. And the barrel itself is made out of 4140 CMD steel. It's got a nitride finish, of course, inside and out. That's gonna give you a good barrel life, good surface hardness, good corrosion resistance, and all in all, be relatively easy to clean as well. The barrel has a one and nine twist to it. These will also be available with eight inch barrels, so really up to you, uh, whichever you want to go with. The handguard on there is CMMG's MRL4 handguard, if I can say that correctly. It's got the M-Lock slots there at the uh, three and nine o'clock position. The one here on the bottom, is a little bit moved back versus the three and nine o'clock position. So uh, you can add MOC accessories if you choose to do so. I also like that it does have a little hand stop here. And that's also one of the reasons while we're on that subject that I really opted to add the flash hider. Of course, it helps with mitigating flash and blast, which is good. But having my hand out there on the end, I wanna make sure that my hand is as far away from that muzzle as possible. I don't want it to slip or anything like that. If so, it's gonna give you a little bit more length just to ensure that nothing bad happens. So safety is all was paramount whenever you're handling firearms. CMMG tells me that this gun can be shot with subsonic ammo suppressed. So what we're gonna do here is, you guys are coming along with me, we're gonna change out the buffer as they recommend. So unlike the um, other guard type uh, pistols out there, it doesn't have an actual weight that you drop in the carrier. Uh, you're just gonna actually change the buffer out itself. So uh, we're gonna take the factory one out we have here. Then they sell this one here, which is the buffer, but it doesn't have any weights in it. So we're gonna put that in there, lock it up. And we have some ammo here. This is from Detroit Ammo. Uh, and this is a 55 grain subsonic round, at least they say. So we're about to see. We got the uh, suppressed armament systems Reaper out there on the end. And we'll see if uh, it's subsonic. <laughs> That's definitely subsonic, <laughs> no doubt about it. And as you guys can see, functions just fine. A lot of rounds there. So that is the process if you guys want to run subsonic through your little 5.7 MK57 here. Now we're gonna get into sort of the heart of the system. Uh, first off, we do have CMMG's extended charging handle that does come standard. As you guys can see, it's ambidextrous, so you can actuate the lever from either side, and it will allow you to run the action of the rifle. It's relatively large. Some folks really like that. Some folks prefer something a little bit smaller, but it certainly works just fine. But the heart of the action here is the delayed radio blowback system that CMMG has. It's been offered on their guard uh, pistols and carbines that I've reviewed here in the past, and it's also on the Banshee. So and 5.7 here, you can take a look at the bolt. It looks kind of funny because the 5.7 round, of course, is a little bit uh, tiny. We have our ejector extractor and then, of course, our lugs that are familiar to anybody who's uh, uh, used to AR-15s. But one thing that's very different about this bolt is these uh, radial cuts here on the back side of each of these lugs. So basically that interfaces with the chamber, the star chamber that you guys are familiar with, and it just delays the unlocking of the bolt prior to extraction for just a second. So it does a few things. Number one, it reduces the amount of force that's coming back versus a straight blowback system, which is important. That allows a few things. Number one, from the shooter's perspective, it's much softer in terms of recoil and 5.7 has almost no recoil as it is. Then when you combine it with this system, it's like literally no recoil. It's, it, it's talk about like a great little setup to start a new shooter on because there's just not any recoil in this system, which I do really like. 
That delay also does another thing. If you're using a suppressor like we were doing with the uh, suppressed armament systems, uh, Reaper suppressor, uh, it makes it quiet more so than just a straight blowback because with the straight blowback as soon as that round's fired that noise is going to come out the ejection port with the delay it makes it quieter to the shooter's ear because that sound is going to of course go more downrange because the bolt is not unlocking it's very similar to the roar lock uh, hk designs out there i know a lot of folks have shot you know suppressed mp mp5s and one of the reasons people like to shoot those suppressed is because they are quieter due to the delay it's the same system same principle not the same system rather same principle here um, in terms of how it sounds with a suppressor on there i want to thank uh, the folks at suppressed armament systems by the way for sending out that half by 28 adapter for that cam so big thanks to them and then uh, moving on to our carrier here you can see CMMG changed the weight of it versus your standard carrier and of course that was all calculated to run reliably with the 5.7 ammo which has of course less recoil impulse, less powder charge and everything like that than you're going to get with 5.56. You can see what would be the gas key here is just a solid piece of steel reason of course is that this is a blowback system so no gas is actually coming through like it would be on an AR-15 yet we still have decent staking on there we have this cutout up here this cutout is also larger than what you'd see in your standard AR-15 and then back here you can see they lightened it up all around and uh, in the past with CMMG's uh, guard series as you guys know if you wanted to run a suppressor you'd put a weight back here like we talked about earlier that's not how they do it with the 5 set, and they did it with a different um, buffer so that's how they run it that's really how it all works the upper receiver is essentially a mil spec ar-15 upper receiver it's forged 7075 t6 aluminum if you get the black version it's going to have the type 3 hard anodizing on there of course this one's been cerakoted and the t markings that would normally be there are sort of subdued due to the cerakote finish but everything else is pretty standard in that regard it does have the m4 feed ramps for reliable feeding in there and then of course it has no gas tube because as we mentioned earlier it is a blowback system now on the lower there's definitely some different things going on it is not similar to what you'd find on an ir-15 first off it's not forged it's going to be billet 7075 t6 aluminum again if it was black it would have the type 3 hard anodizing on there um, but as you guys can see it's built purpose built rather for the 5.7 round just like the guard pistols that i've used before they modify the mag well to make sure everything sits uh, as it should be when the mag is in the actual pistol itself so that you have a good feeding angle from the magazine i should note that it does ship with a pro mag 20 round magazine Throughout the review, we've used uh, FN mags because, of course, I do have an FN 5.7. I guess we'll just throw that on here for some eye candy on the table. Um, but we've also used these mags and the Pro Mag that it comes with. They recommend only using 20-round Pro Mags. Uh, you guys probably noticed in the intro that we have also used the 30-round Pro Mags just to try it out. I uh, requested Brownells to send a few out. They did, so big thanks to them for doing that as well. Uh, one thing I will tell you is this pistol had one malfunction the entire time we've used it and that was in the 30 round pro mag both fn and cmmg recommend not using these if you want absolute reliability they recommend using the 20 round uh, models either the pro mag or the fn mags um, so just keep that in mind but if you want to have a little bit more fun and not reload as much 30 rounds certainly is good but that is what we've used. It works equally fine so far in my experience with the Pro Mags as well as the FN Mags. But getting back to the lower, you can see we have a very nice flared mag well to ease the reloading process, which I certainly do like. I've talked about that in a million videos. Um, we have our opened up trigger guard, so that way, unlike a mil spec one, if you're firing it a lot, you're not gonna have your finger dragging on the bottom of the trigger guard, which is nice. The trigger on this particular one is just CMMG's single stage mil spec trigger. Breaks right around five and a half pounds. It has that real strong reset there that I do like. Otherwise, not a whole lot to write home about in that regard, which nothing wrong with that. Safety on this one is ambidextrous as you guys can see. And our mag release is pretty cool. So I'm gonna grab another one of those magazines to demonstrate this. So CMMG engineered it. So that way, as you guys can see, as I push on the mag release, it's actually actuating a little lever. If you guys can see it there inside the mag well, which is right here on our magazine. So mag goes in, press it, drops free, comes out. That is how it works, and it works well in that regard. Now the actual grip, pistol grip, is going to be the Magpul MOE, probably the most popular uh, AR-15 grip out there in America right now. It's a very good one. No complaints on that. 
we do have the little sling attachment point here on the back. It's ambidextrous in that regard. And the brace that uh, the pistol version comes with is the uh, tail hook mod two here. So this is an excellent brace. And I just want to mention how it sort of interfaces here with the receiver extension. It's a little bit different than like a mil spec one. And the reason is the adjustment knobs are right here. So it's an adjustable brace. Uh, a lot of folks will probably be familiar with the SBA3. Uh, it's similar in that regard. And of course you can open it up here on the rear and put your hand through it. And that way you can use it as a brace or per the ATF's current rulings, you can use it uh, intermittently as a device to fire from your shoulder. We already mentioned the reliability. We had one malfunction with it, and that was with, I believe, American Eagle ammo in that 30 round Pro Mag. So again, they don't recommend the Pro Mags, but I had to try it anyway. So it is what it is in that regard. You guys saw the accuracy. It's a pretty darn accurate little pistol, which makes sense with the five, seven round. And of course the uh, free floated barrel that we have here is not a lot to go wrong, not a lot to mess up in terms of accuracy. So it shot really well. Again, the recoil impulse is almost nothing. As to the ballistics of the five, seven round, you guys are free to debate that down below in the comment section but even out of this little five inch barrel we're getting pretty good velocity with like the american eagle 40 grain and stuff like that i know uh will over at the wound channel is planning on doing some uh, ballistics tests with several different loads from these little pistols so check it out if you guys haven't yet you want to see sort of how it performs out of a setup like this but um, it's certainly something I wouldn't want to be shot with, I can tell you that much. And in this little package here, um, unloaded without the optic and light, of course, this thing weighs in at four pounds and seven ounces on my scale. So it weighs like almost nothing. Um, in terms of cost, it's not the cheapest. Uh, in this type of configuration, as you guys see it here, it's going to be right around $1,500 MSRP, of course, on the street. After a little while, the price may go down, but that is what it's listed at as of this post right now. So it's not cheap which is really kind of one of the few things making this not an ideal sort of truck gun because like I said, it's lightweight. It gives you the ability to reach out a little bit farther than a pistol, uh, at least practically so um, in this type of setup. And it's just super small, super compact. It can fit in a lot of places that a full size rifle just wouldn't. And of course with the tail hook brace on here versus an SBR, it's uh, easy to travel around the country, go over state lines, all that stuff. You don't have to worry about any of that with this type of setup so all in all the guard and the banshee series now like i said i've had no troubles with they've ran really really well in my experience and uh, this is just another one added onto the lineup in a pretty cool little caliber in my opinion if you guys have any questions about this pistol that we didn't cover in the video by all means post down below in the comment section as always the best place to reach me though is over at my facebook page i tend to answer and see more of the questions there than i do on youtube or full 30 but that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing if you guys are new to the channel here and you like what you saw please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope to see all of you in the next video